Hey, what's happening guys? BJ the Brave here, and today I'm back with another Tau Deck guide for you, and this time we're going to focus on the drones, and we're going to particularly focus on Commander Omesos. This is my first Omesos deck guide. I know we've been focusing on other themes, and I've definitely got some other themes I want to get to in the future, but I think uh, now is the time to really kind of jump in and kind of see what what we can do with the drones. So um, I've been playing with a few different builds and experimenting a little bit and I think I found something that I'm pretty happy with so I wanted to share that with you guys today and share a few stats as well on some of the games on the first 10 games that I've played and then we're going to actually jump into a few games to kind of see the deck in action. Now first of all I want to kind of share with you what's on the screen right now which is uh, essentially uh, what I am, um, I'm just going to move myself over here, um, essentially what I'm calling like the core drones package. So I think that any really solid drone deck, probably regardless of the leader, probably includes these 15 cards. Now um, obviously own she uh, might not be a card that you yet own um, because it is a legendary and it would it could definitely work without Onshi, but the reason why Onshi is pretty good in drone decks is that uh, one of the strategies that we're trying to do with drones is essentially cheat them out, uh, so that means make them cheaper to actually play. And Onshi is a card that obviously discounts troops, so Onshi does have good synergy in this deck. But I think if you didn't have Onshi, we could perhaps make an argument that it's not necessary in the core package. And the only other one that um, that I think is kind of like potentially not necessary in the core drones package would be the experimental drones. Now, what I mean by that is if you are trying to specifically angle towards an aggro drone deck. So if you were trying to do that, then I think playing the uh, fire strike marksman as in your four drop slot makes more sense if you're trying to really go down the kind of more aggro route. Um, and often in many games we don't ever use this card, the experimental drones. Um, it is a little bit of a risky card as well sometimes to play. Uh, if you get if you if you get too carried away and play it too early, it can cost you a match because it's a huge tempo loss. So you've got to know when to play it. But the thing about experimental drones and the reason why I think it's in the core package and the reason why I include it in this deck I'm going to show you today is that it enables us to kind of play the long game. Um, and when we do play the long game, this is the number one card that just gives us insane value, right? If every single drone that comes down, whether it's from Commander Amasis' Warlord talent or if it comes from any other place, to be quite frank, if it's coming down with a shield, um, I'm not a mathematician, I don't want to say it doubles its value, but it, it certainly shoots its amount of value through the roof and it makes it incredibly difficult for our opponent in the long kind of grindy game. So it allows us to kind of grind games out. And where, for example, you're in the meta with um, Gazgul, who's probably the, 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 the top deck at the minute, um, this can be a key card in, say, that matchup to, to where you're playing like a value matchup. So. Uh, so I do keep it, but I do think you can get away with not playing this if you want to go down a more aggro route. Okay, so obviously when you've got this core package, just very quickly, you've got the Pathfinders because they bring out obviously two two marker drones, super good, super effective card. Uh, Pathfinder giving the um, some marker light that isn't impacted by the Solar Eclipse offense card either. Uh, the Stealth drones are just absolutely fantastic. These cards just that every game I play, these just go up and up in my estimation. They're like they're, they're, they're a contender for best card in the faction. That's how good these cards are. Um, Dark Strider, uh, because again, superb synergy, um, extending kind of what the stealth drones do in, in giving giving more stealth to other drones, including the stealth drone. Um, so superb synergy with Dark Strider. Uh, the protocols are like really, really key. We really want to get this in our opening mulligan because this card is essentially um, permanently are decreasing the cost of drones, so super super effective, especially if we can play this on turn three. Uh, the sniper drones are just great value three drops, and obviously being drones, there's a chance that we get these way cheaper than three. But even just playing this on E3, um, you know, turn two, whatever, it's it's really really good. If our opponent wants to hit with a warlord, they often have to take four damage. In, so even if he does get traded out on their turn, they've already taken four damage to face from it. So for a three drop, it's really, really solid. And obviously, if they don't attack it, then the long range 
uh, can mean that this card can do some serious damage. And when it comes out late game behind vanguards and things, it's actually a really, really strong card. Piranha's just exceptional um, in this deck because obviously when you play the aforementioned uh, savior protocols that means that drones cost one less then when you drop the piranha it says that the piranha ma makes drones cost one less as well which means that the two gun drones are essentially zero cost so one of the opening combos that we look for in the mulligan is uh, savior protocols on e3 which is turn two and then straight into piranha on turn three um, super uh, tempo turn and a really insanely powerful start we also run the Valued Sacrifice. The Valued Sacrifice is a pretty good card, guys, and it's really good in this deck, right? Like, uh, again, uh, another great um, thing we can look for is uh, Experimental Drones on turn 3, which is E4, right? E for energy. Um, and then the turn after, you can drop the Valued Sacrifice, and that drops the three Vanguard Drones that all now have shield as well. Superb opener. Um, and then you can go into Aumshi the turn after, for example. So this is the core package. Now, I think you could go ahead and build all sorts of different decks just using this package. Um, so I'm going to show you uh, just a, a, an example. I, I made one called Razor Drones. This deck actually did pretty well. I want to come back to it. I want to I want to play this more. And um, there's a few, uh, a few of the earlier cards, like the Razor Shark Fighter, for example, which is a basic card. This card's actually pretty good actually did really really well for me in this deck um, and just gave us some nice kind of like uh, top end cards for the opponent to worry about uh, so th this is this is pretty good and, and again you'll see that kind of core package in there so that core package that we talked about I think you could uh, basically apply an awful lot of different um, different uh, themes to with the other 15 cards uh, but one of the um, decks that I've really landed on and the one I'm going to share with you today is this one which is the Optimus Drones. So we added the Kalyon Tactics which is you know it's dirt cheap, Marker Light 2 again isn't hindered by the uh, Camouflage which comes off of the Offense spell. That combines very nicely with the Relentless Fusillade but it also combines very nicely just with drones right like if you think about uh, you could have a wall of drones out that only have one range attack but all of a sudden if you play this for one energy all your drones can deal up to three damage range attack and that that is really powerful so Kalyon Tactics is just superb in this deck. Uh, what else have we added to that core package? Well, we finally found a home for the greater good. I'm, I've not been loving this card, but um, in this particular deck, this card actually is really good um, because we can have a turn where, for example, we attack with our drones and they're wounded and they're quite low down, and then we uh, and maybe we drop something like semi decent, and then we just drop this for only two energy, and it basically we drop this on our warlord, and it basically means that our opponent can't deal with our board through trading means anyway so unless they've got like will of gork or some aoe uh it just makes our board super super safe uh which is just really powerful and can often set up like a win of course we run emergency dispensation because i've got that legendary and why would you not like that card should be in pretty much every single tower deck it's it's a fantastic card it allows us to draw what we need pretty much when we need it then we have the Storm of Fire. Now we do run one copy of this, and obviously anybody that's been running on VAR will be very uh, spoiled and privileged in that they can kind of get this whenever they want. But uh, when you're not running on VAR, you do have to pay for it, and it is worth having a copy. Um, I think two copies is probably a little bit overkill, to be honest. Although, you know, we because it's so easy to go wide with drones, I could see you running two of these and using one of them just as a turn to basically... Uh, in, a, in almost a similar way of what we talked about with the Kalyan Tactics, just turning those drones into more effective removers. But we try to use it in this deck as a finisher, right? Like, uh, it's very often the case that we can do things like uh, burn our opponent down from 20 health if we've got this in hand. Now, of course, we added the Vespid Sphinx Sting Wings because uh, a, a, along with um, a, a army of cheap drones, the Vespid are very cheap and they're effective flying units that can come on with flank and deal with our opponent. I think the last card we actually put in the deck was the Crisis Bodyguard. So this is probably a flex spot. Like I just put it in to have another Vanguard um, and fill out the curve a little bit in terms of bodies. Because it, often what we're looking for obviously is the experimental drones or the Piranha on turn four. We're not really looking for the Crisis Bodyguard. 
but it is more of like an emergency if we don't get one of those two then we can play that instead uh, we do add the honored ethereal I do have to say like this card is it is a potential one for dropping like that this card has been one of my favorite legendaries I definitely did not see that coming but as someone who built the crisis sorry the battle suit decks uh, if you've not watched those videos yet go and check out um, my own VAR battle suits video guide uh, this deck this card's been like awesome it's been one of the best legendaries but I do have to say it's not as good in this deck because you don't really have as many big bodies for it to kind of its its ability of uh, Vanguard to like really benefit and you don't often want to put Vanguard on drones because it kind of they lose their one of their main defense which is their flight so I have to say like if I was gonna cut a card the honored ethereal might be one of the ones that I'd consider cutting but the thing about honored ethereal is that just well two things just as a four drop it's actually excellent like the stats with shield is just worth it on its own and it's very likely to survive a turn and what's brilliant about that is it then comes with serene unifier so because we're not running on var actually having the ethereal which is the honored ethereal and on on she they both have serene unifier and that gives us access then to be able to basically either get a shield or to be able to get a storm of fire which is really really important and that's why i keep um, honored ethereal in we already talked about the piranhas uh, now the relentless fusillade i put in there to just have uh, some aoe uh, you know I, I kind of felt like two is probably too much so i just have one and i've got the carry on tactics if we if we do get the combo we run the broadside battle suits um, again uh, not as effective as my crisis suit decks but what is really cool with this is if you can manage to get it lined up with a stealth drone that can be insane because of the long range obviously then being a guarantee pretty much to be able to go off so uh, it's overall a pretty powerful unit and if it's late game and obviously you can drop out the drones and once you've dropped uh, as we talked about earlier once you've dropped things like your savior protocols and you've made things cheaper then this is just a, a value package it's just a way of getting a load of value out uh, so very very strong um, we've talked about value sacrifice we've talked about on she so the last two three cards are with double enforcer battle suit you know this is a good card anyway with the drones only costing one but in this deck it's very often that those drones are free right so you basically for six energy get all of that value uh, I also just love the Enforcer giving plus one range attack to a unit that's already down, including the Warlord. It's really powerful. And last but not least, Long Strike, because why would you leave home with like Long Strike? He's superb, really helps in the Chaos match in particular, um, and he's just an all round badass at the top end of the curve. So, yeah, this is the deck that I am running with. And as I say, you're trying to look for, um, in terms of the early game, obviously Commander Omesos. Uh, allows us to put a marker or a gun drone um, down straight away so that's pretty good I'll, I'll often um, take the uh, look, look for sorry the savior protocols into uh, into piranhas we'll probably keep the sniper drone as well or the vespid they're the keeps if we do get the emergency dispensation is it emergency dispensation sorry experimental drones if we do get that then we'd also keep the five drop as well which is the valued sacrifice so that's the mulligan so let's jump into some games guys and see how we get on actually just before we do that let me just show you this so this is yeah so this is basically where we're at with optimus drones so uh 10 games so far we got eight wins and two losses um the two losses were to gazgul uh, one of them was just ridiculous i was so far ahead i was winning so badly and he he basically burst me down from 15 and um what i realized was i, I was putting out marker drones which were shielded because i'd got the experimental drones card out and i was just like all i had to do was just drop guardian drones off my warlord i was literally i literally had six units on the board so i, I had a silly loss to gaskell where Okay, so we're going to look at a game that we lost first against Gazgol, and this was against Spank Marine, who's actually um, at the top of the ladder at this point. Uh, and he's running Gazgol. So, pretty good opening, actually. We could have kept the Pathfinder, but we uh, probably, probably would have been quite a good turn 4 player, to be honest, after the Saviour. Um, but we threw that away actually and kept stealth so let's see what we got we got the double vespid maybe should have kept the pathfinder on reflection it's a pretty standard opening from spack marine 
Well, maybe the gun, gun drones are pretty good against Gaskell because they just pick off the uh, pick off the grots quite nicely. Like you don't want to mark a drone because if the marker drone hits the grot, then you've got to clear it with your lord, and it was a waste. Okay, so we're doing pretty good here. Like um, the protocols goes off. He's just kind of like delaying. So we develop a flanker, we put it into stealth. And then he gets us with a really good Scorch Assault. There's something you've got to look out for on turn 4 against Gaskell with that kind of play, that kind of like low health player. Would have been better off actually trading with our Lord rather than trading with Vespid if we were going to set that up, thinking about it. The Vet Storm Boy just trades really, really nicely into this, leaving him with 3 health, and it's a bit of a problem. It's a bit of a problem, so we actually decide we're going to bot Battle Suit just to get the buff to the range damage so we can actually trade. But because we obviously triggered the protocols earlier, we do get his drones for free as well, so that's always a really nice turn 6 play. And quite nice um, adjustment here by Spatmarine. He uses proper killing to actually just take out the the two drones, and then that leaves him beautifully on four energy with a, no mucking about. I really like that turn actually by him. It's not a turn you'll often see, but that's like um, that's a very uh, it shows the flexibility with Gaskell basically of how you can use him. So we drop the three drones, and then obviously play the hero power as well. He returns the favour with some grots. And he also uh, uses Adder's Nails here to really build a board. Now, obviously, we've got Tactics and Relentless Fusillade, and we, we, I thought about it here, but then I thought, you know, if he's running the Storm Boy Strike or obviously Rock Invasion, there's quite a few things here. And I sort of thought, well, can I deal with this board without having to go down that route? And so it's it's not a great way of dealing with it. Like it's okay, but it's not it's not brilliant. I, I kind of feel like I see the reasoning why why we did that. That's what we're more worried about. But actually, that was a very good board for it. And he's able to just put more pressure on, as you see. And and then he's gonna will of Gorkas as well. So. There is part of me that sort of thinks we, we, we wasted a lot of resources there. Um, and he got to basically put that extra 5 damage on us as well. So now we're getting down into like lethal range as well. Which is a real problem against Orcs. So I think we made a few mistakes here. Look at his health as well, right? He's up to f full 40 health. Gets rid of the. He's able to get rid of the long range and just basically stun that. Yeah, and I mean, I'm putting stealth on that guy, but it's a bit late, right? He's Might have been better just actually vanguarding up there, to be honest. We go in on that one marker light to try and actually bring Gasgol's health down a bit. Try and threaten him a bit. I'm hoping we play the Honor Death Real here because we would need the Serene Unifier. We didn't. We didn't because I think we didn't want to overplay into another Will of God. He's got the Pyrotechnic Technics though, which is brilliant at dealing with this. Deliberately playing so he gets this out. So you see, we're in this problem. We're in this pressure now, where uh, even though we can compete for board very well, we are so far behind on health that we're kind of just—he's he's really threatening. And what we should be doing this turn now, like look at this board state. We've got 11 energy. We should be definitely thinking about Vanguard. Yeah, 
yeah, so we're trying to get the markers to hit Gazgol here. And he comes out with Crump de Gitz. And what is he dropping? Oh, he's dropping Hardshell. And the Gretchen as well. Crump de Gitz uh, becoming very popular now in the Gazgol builds. So we're going to have to mark like this guy up. We still need a vanguard though. Yeah. And this is the problem is we, we should have done that first if we were going to do it. So we ended up wasting it. And the problem is now we don't have the vanguard. And look at that, he had three cards in hand. And I'm thinking, what has he possibly got? He's already used a bike. He's already used proper killer. Oh, look, he's got a bike and he's got get em, lads. So, I mean... Who's running that? Come on, Spack Marine. <laughs> and fair enough. But, you know, he was down to that. That's a crap card. We've basically played into that. Um... You think about how much life we gave away needlessly there. We could have absolutely defended against that defeat. So definitely that game, I could watch that game another 10 times and I think there's a lot of misplays on our part. Um, really got to think about your life because you don't have heal with this deck. So let's just jump in to one more. Yeah, so the other one was here. So this one was against Galen. So we actually get rid of everything except for the stealth drone. I think we could have kicked the stealth drone as well. We draw the sniper and the valued sacrifice. This place. We must the so we decide to open with the stealth. And this, this is a good opening when you've got a good three drop that you want to protect, which obviously we do with the sniper drone. And the other good thing about the stealth drone on two is, I mean, obviously our normal drones will as well. Going first is really good against the Eldar because you can kill kill this guy now and just trade nicely with the with the drone. And we drop the sniper drone to go into stealth. Very important against Eldar because he's obviously got things like the Shard Runners and the Wind Riders. So it basically protects against his flankers. So we kill the Guardian. Do we take the stone or do we actually hit face here? I think we hit face. Okay. And then we drop the Honor Death Reel. We don't put that into Vanguard. Yeah, I do think that the Death Reel could be dropped from this deck, to be honest. It's such a great card, but I don't think it's necessary in this particular deck. It's just that the serene, the serene piece is is quite good to be fair. So we drop the valued sacrifice. We got the pressure on tempo, and we actually did attack there just to basically make use of the damage and play around Eldritch Storm. And I remember when he then stormed. I remember saying well done to myself because <laughs> there, there are many times where I don't do that and I play greedily. But you've, you know, you've got to think, like, if he storms me next turn, then I just lose the 5 damage. So I was kind of happy that I made that read there. Very much a setting up turn here. Not sure about that turn. We might have been better getting the Enforcer down, pressing the tempo advantage that we have. Or had. Of course, now we get drones for free, so this is pretty handy. The drones go down, and obviously we can drop Dark Strider now to actually put those into stealth this turn, if we're not worried about the health this turn. I 
just uses that purely for the flanking. And uh, Dax tried to do his thing, putting the two on, and then obviously a storm of fate. And that wins the game. Turn 8. So you can have these games that end sort of between turn 6 and turn 9 quite commonly with this deck. But you can also, like, drag the game. You, you can drag the game into deeper waters. If you protect your health, you can drag the game into deeper waters as well with your. Um, particularly with the card that makes everything uh, shielded. So yeah, there you go guys. So that's the that's the um deck. Now what we're gonna do is just jump into a few uh just a few games now, a few normal games, uh just to watch at your own pace. If you're like me, you probably want to watch it on like 1.5 speed just to speed it up a bit. But yeah, I hope this has given you an insight. It's like I said, it's my first um Omasis deck. And I think it's pretty good. I think this I think this drone build's pretty good. I'm not sure if it's as good as as my crisis suit, as my battle suit deck, and I'm not sure whether Amasis is as good as Onvar uh, yet. To be honest, um, I think as people, I think it's a very good hit warlord talent, but I think it's one that people can adapt to. I heard people comparing it to Gazgul in December, and that's ridiculous. But like warlords couldn't deal with Gazgul in December, but when you adapt to Amasis, you, you can actually kill him. Shadow Sun can deal with him. Neurothroat can deal with him. Imatek can deal with him. Zagstruck can deal with him. Uh, there's quite a lot of things that once they adapt to Mesos, I think you can counter him. Whereas I'm not sure that, that it will be as easy to do that with Onvar. So um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. And I'm going to have plenty more decks coming your way. So uh, yeah, let's jump into some games now. And um, I'll see you in the next one. Please like and subscribe. And uh, thanks for all the support. Not the greatest starting hand, I'm not gonna lie.
pretty crazy. Pretty crazy noise, Marine. This is like this, this is like the sick dream with the broadside being stealth and it's just yeah super nasty. Yeah, pretty easy win. Long strike sitting in the wings as well for any biggies. Anvia. Okay, so get the savior. Tacos. God, that's interesting. Is Anvia the beat down against us? Okay, so we can kill that, and we can also put um, the stealth drone on this, which is quite good. Field. 
just the Banshee to worry about. It does give him the second stone though for the um, for the Eldritch Storm. This installed is pretty sick. Is it worth putting that on that? Might need it next turn though, like, might need it when he's threatening. Uh, the thing is, if he's got his second storm, it's game over anyway. Pretty sure he's sitting on like Wailing Doom. Nice. Shielded up long strikes, quite nice. Not easy for Eldar to deal with. Yeah. 
second storm. Got him. Mirror match. Savior Protocols turn 3 means that we can play Pathfinder in both rounds, 1-4, which is pretty good. There's a gun drone here. Stealth drone into DS8. <laughs> That's a hell of a. That is a hell of a. God, blooming it. Hell of a valued sacrifice, that is. You can't be happy with that one. as well, the stealth drones come up.
fucked up one frame, really. The thing is with those, those mirrors as well is the more you fall behind, the harder it is to come back. Gasgul, Gasgul. Do we want to play this now and protect that? Or do we want to play it next turn? Scorch Assault this. Kinda happy to see a Scorch Assault here, right?
Gork, isn't it? So we probably fill this back up with the broadside. Maybe we should have just gone in there with Storm. Ooh, this is interesting. Though. Let's just do it. This guy loses to Vet Storm Boy pretty badly. Kind of like the turn 9 play with experimental drones and valued sacrifice. I think that could be pretty good. So the dream would be he plays Ard Shot now. Just that explosion could hurt, couldn't it? <laughs> oh yeah, here comes the heels. <laughs> Nice. 